Well, this is uh, the main guitar. Um, I still take it out on the road because I'm hard-headed, I suppose. <laughs> but it's a Gibson ES-125 from 1956. Oh, wow. I bought it in about 1993 from uh, a guy, one of the first songwriters I met when I moved to town. I would moved here in summer of 92. And this guy, Pat Gallagher, who was from Indiana, um, he wrote, you know, just straight ahead country songs. And anytime you'd go over to his place, he'd, he'd just have his acoustic guitar out. Well, over in the corner, you know, the shadowy nether regions of, of his uh, place, uh, this thing was, was standing up, you know, w waiting. And I saw it, and I was like, hey, Pat, <laughs> you think I could borrow that for, for the weekend, you know? I'm trying to get, get my sound together, you know? Or I can't remember what I said, but... Uh, so he let me borrow it, and, you know, he, he was a very gracious, generous fellow. Just great, great dude. And... Uh, we we ended up well. I never took the guitar back. We we made a deal, and it was a ridiculously uh, good deal. Uh, looking back on it, I think it was uh, three hundred and fifty dollars, uh, which I knew even then was a, a, a good price. I mean these you know these aren't the fancy ones. These these were basically like student guitars. I think uh, in their time. You know, I love just the feel of it, old, you know. And uh, the neck, I love this neck. When I first got it, I didn't, it's in open detuning now and has been for decades, but when I first got it, I just put it in what would be double drop D, the low string and the high string down a step. And I had written a song that was kind of in that tuning, but at some point, it became obvious, like, just just go to detuning, open D, you know. Are those flat lounge? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and it's interesting with this guitar, because it only has one pickup. The neck pickup is, of course, dark sounding. And the flats kind of feed into that. The amp I use when I play solo is a, a, an old uh, Fender Princeton. Still has the the 10-inch speaker in it. A lot of people mod those amps and put 12s in them. I think for this guitar, the 10 is is great because it cuts out some of the the heavy low stuff uh, and actually makes for maybe a, a better overall tone. <laughs> This is a 125, right? Mm -hmm. There was a 56 or 57 for sale in some guitar store in Hollywood. First time I ever went to Los Angeles. And um, it was $375. I had $400 and I had to be there for, I think, three more weeks. <laughs> and um, I've had some uncomfortable months before. And I was really, really seriously thinking about buying it. And I wanted it really bad. And um, I just started thinking I have to be more responsible than that. The bad thing is, is all of these years later, the pain of that month would just be a distant memory. But yes. I would still have this guitar. Yes. And um, I'm guessing when you bought this, it might have been hard to get the money at that time or whatever, because 350 seemed like a lot of money back then. Yeah. 
but now it's just a distant memory and you've had this companion. Yeah, and it totally changed my the way I write, the way I think about playing guitar, uh, you know. I mean, I, I usually write, write on this guitar, you know, just unamplified. Uh, so, it, yeah, it's been a good friend, as I like to say, you know. Uh, Can you tell me why you started exploring the open D tuning? Well, I tried the double drop D, and I was really digging the, the drone, you know, the droning aspects of that. And I guess just going to the regular open D opened up more of that. So, is this stuff you were hearing on blues records? I mean, to some extent, of course. You know, Elmore James is, is the classic classic example. Um, you know, I, I guess it's probably was used more by slide players than what. I mean, I guess the motive, motivating factor was um, I was realizing pretty quickly that I needed a way to play my songs solo that reflected kind of where those songs came from, you know. So in that way, this thing was perfect. And as anybody who has guitar with a P90 knows, you know, if you just lightly pick it, it has a very nice, pretty, almost acoustic tone. But when you lean on it, you know, it's you get those beautiful uh, apocalyptic sounds of, you know, John Lee Hooker records in 1948 or something, you know, uh, or you, you can, you know, you might have to turn your amp up, but um, it's a very responsive uh, pickup. And uh, so uh, the open tuning thing for me personally was basically, basically just out of insecurity. The last thing I wanted to do was stand up in front of people playing solo with an acoustic guitar in standard tuning because I felt confounded by it. I, I you know, I, I didn't feel like I had any fluidity like from the bluegrass world or any of that. Um, and the droning was so comforting. So I started learning chord shapes that brought that out. You know, I thought it, I thought the sound brought things to the songs that that were needed, you know, and helped communicate back to the audience or listening to a record, things that were important about where the song came from, you know. I guess I'm getting a little too abstract here, but... Um, yeah. um, so a lot of what I'm doing is just masking the third of the, of the scale, you know, so... That sounds pretty huge. I was really digging that. It's neither major nor minor kind of thing. And it worked great for songs like 24 Diamonds. Um, it also worked great for the Roots stuff, you know. You know, just the fact that you can just rake across and get, you can get a real groove going in there. Um, so, yeah, man, I, I was just kind of, I became addicted to it. Um, I say this at a time when I'm not practicing very much and I'm beating myself up about it every day. <laughs> uh, I'll get back to it. But, uh, and that's the other thing. It's like, no matter how much I learn, I'm constantly confounded, you know. It's the beautiful thing about art in general is you never master it. It's just a path that you can follow through life and uh, and you just try to get as close to the source as you can. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So Kevin's got a new record out and you can hear this guitar all over it. Really great stuff. I'll link to a video right here and I'll also put a link down below in the top comment. But um, you should go there, listen to it, leave a comment on the video saying Otis sent me and show Kevin some love. 
and I will see you somewhere down the road. Much love to you.